Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. I'm going to share with you something in this video that you've never seen before. And maybe that's a bit presumptuous, but I speculate that the vast majority of you, at a minimum, have never seen what I'm about to share with you. It has to do with the origins of XRP itself and Ripple, the company, and a document signed by uh, creators of XRP and the founders of Ripple that uh, states that XRP actually has no value, along with some other interesting tidbits. And the reason that I, um, I, I started going down this path is because of the article that is on your screen here from the Crypto Basic titled, Expert Advises Community Against Referring to XRP as Ripple's XRP. And it prompted me to look up uh, a conversation that I had on Twitter years ago, which is now known as X, of course. Uh, but I had a conversation then on uh, what was then Twitter with a Forbes writer who is, as far as I can tell, he's a Bitcoin maximalist writing for Forbes and uh, does, just does not like XRP in particular. And he's one of these people that would keep calling XRP Ripple's XRP. And so I debated him. I debated him publicly on Twitter. And it, it turns out that he ended up, because he lost the debate, I'll just share, I'll share with you what led to this. I gave him founding documents from Ripple the company because he said, no, it's Ripple's XRP, Ripple created it. He ended up deleting all of our conversation that he wrote. So I still got my portion. And so through context, you can figure out the type of stuff that he was saying. So I'm going to share with you that too. But yes, uh, interesting. Before going further, though, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so this article from the Crypto Basic is sharing a comment from a Coin Bureau, which, by the way, Coin Bureau is run by a guy whose name is Guy. And he's got a large following here on X. You can see 819,200 followers. And he also has the world's largest cryptocurrency YouTube channel with 2.33 million subscribers. Incredibly impressive. And I've been aware of Guy dating back almost half a decade. Because I remember even in the earliest days of running my channel, um, he was putting stuff out. And mind you, like his channel was way smaller. Mine, mine certainly was too. Uh, but I remember covering this back when, like, we were blips on the radar, effectively. And I was having to correct him back then, and there is nothing different today. He would say all sorts of stuff about XRP that just was not true. And I, I just, I've always wondered, is it because he doesn't like XRP? Is he okay with this level of misinformation? But here we have a guy who is named Guy and also is very well aware of, uh, you know, the status of XRP, the history of XRP. But he's still using this language that uh, XRP is Ripple's XRP. In 2023, he's doing this. And so he still needs to be correct, uh, corrected. And I've corrected him many times before over the years. And I'm sure many of you are, are, are fans of him and you know, like him. And that, that's fine. This is not a personal attack on him. I'm just observing that he's saying things about XRP that are not true. I run an XRP-centric YouTube channel. I'm correcting the record. Because he has the largest YouTube channel on the entire damn planet in, in the world of crypto. And so he had this post. He wrote, potentially some good news for XRP? question mark, And he was sharing the fake news in this particular clip about Roblox um, ad adopting XRP as a payment method. And I've, I've, that's, that's been debunked, and I've, I've shared all that, so I'm not getting into that in this video. But he, he, when he said XRP, instead of just XRP, he said Ripple's XRP. It's just, it's blatantly incorrect. I don't, I just, it, it, why would someone do that at this point in time? He has to have this knowledge, right? And so <clears throat> Attorney John Deaton reposted that from Coin Bureau and wrote the following. It will be cool when XRP is only referenced as XRP instead of Ripple's XRP. To be fair to Guy, Ripple does own a lot of XRP, although it is now under 50%. I don't believe Ripple had anything to do with this announcement or the integration, so maybe one day the reporting will go, good news for XRP and XRP holders. Yeah, so of course Attorney Deaton's right, but uh, he's being uh, a little bit more conciliatory than I will be in this particular instance. And so I wrote to attorney Deaton here, uh, people should only say Ripple's XRP if they're referencing the XRP that Ripple owns. Otherwise, they're saying something false. Some do it out of ignorance. Some do it intentionally. We can eventually figure out which it is. Because if someone is corrected multiple times, but they keep saying it, that means they want to frame it that way. That means they're willing to mislead their audience. And folks, um, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. That is what Guy is doing here. 
He's been corrected so many times. He's seen it. There's no way he doesn't know. He's well informed in the world of crypto. He wants to call it Ripple's XRP. Now, I don't know why. You can speculate on that, but but he is doing this unquestionably. And so that leads us to the next part of this. So I just want to share with you that because I just think it's fascinating that people are still doing this. I've been fighting this for literally years on end. And this is what's going to bring us into the most interesting part of this video and the document that I, I uh, teased you with a little bit at the outset of the video where uh, the founders said XRP literally has no value, which is true, obviously. I mean, I've said that many times. Like, that's why when these people, there are people out there who said, you know, Ripple's greedy and they gave themselves so much XRP at the, you know, at the inception of it. Uh, you know, it's creation. And I just said, yes, they gave themselves that. And it was worth zero dollars and zero cents. Oh, the greed. Oh, the greed. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, look, look at this, though. Here's a here's a, a Forbes article written by Billy Bambro. Uh, this is a guy who I believe is a Bitcoin maximalist. He definitely doesn't like XRP. And um, he just he's just he's doing the same thing as guy from Coin Bureau and is saying ripples XRP instead of XRP. And he's still doing it today. In 2020, so I, I, I def I'll show you in a second here. I defeated him in a debate publicly on Twitter. He deleted the responses that he had to me, and then he just kept on doing what he was doing. That's just what he did. So I'm just going to report on it. It's like you don't just get to do that and then have someone like me not notice that you're doing that and misleading people who are reading the crap that you're writing in Forbes, which is supposed to be a reputable uh, media outlet. And so here you have a November 24th, 2020 article. We're coming up on three years of this. And this is what prompted my interaction with him. He had this article uh, he wrote for Forbes titled Ripple's XRP has more than doubled in price this week, far outpacing Bitcoin and Ethereum. Here's why. And folks, this was a fun time to be in crypto, actually, because we had we had gone through months of it's what it seemed like anyway. Go, you go back to if you wanted the precise <laughs> figures, you go back and look at the chart at the time. But I, I believe it was months leading up to this where XRP was basically in the 20 something cent range and it felt like it was just going to stay there forever. But like I always say, it feels like it's going to stay there forever until suddenly it's not there anymore. And look at this first sentence here uh, in this article. Ripple's XRP, currently the world's third biggest cryptocurrency by market value behind Bitcoin and Ethereum, has soared over the last week, adding around 150% to its price. So folks, that's quick. One week, 150% gain. So we've seen this a number of times over the history of XRP. And I believe, if memory serves anyway, it got up to something like 92 cents at that particular point in time. Somewhere around there anyway. But, again, he's calling it Ripple's XRP. So I hopped on what was then known as Twitter. And I tagged Billy Bambro here. And here you, you can see his profile here. The first thing in here, hashtag Bitcoin. He's got the little Bitcoin logo there. That's in his description on his profile. And then he says, crypto and blockchain for Forbes. So right there... If you're not a maximalist, I don't know why you specifically have Bitcoin in that. I mean, it's possible. You know, I mean, for instance, I, I, I note that I'm an XRP YouTuber in my profile, and that doesn't mean that I'm an XRP maximalist, but basically, but it just put connect the dots. So he has that, and then he behaves in the way that you'd expect a maximalist to behave. You know, trying to rip down, he just he rips XRP to shreds every chance he gets. Doesn't make any damn sense. Misleading the audience. And so I wrote, Billy Bambro, unless you're referencing that XRP, which Ripple holds, and you weren't in this piece... It's not Ripple's XRP. And here you can see that there is a post to me that was deleted by the author. That was from Billy Bambro. He did respond to me. And uh, I actually can prove it to you. Uh, I, just do it yourself if you're actually that curious. I promise I'm telling the truth. But if you go to the advanced search function <clears throat> on X, you can type, you, you can actually search for all, um, all posts from one account to another account. So if you type in my a user account and then uh, received by and then his user account, which is at Billy Bambro, then you will see everything that I wrote to him and it brings up these messages. So even though they're deleted, the system of X will still note, it'll still bring them up because I wrote to him. So you can actually verify that I'm not just making this up. Not that I would, but I just, just in case anybody wants that level of, of proof, you actually can have it. Uh, so through context, we can kind of figure out what he said. So, so there's the deleted post. We don't know what's in it. And then I wrote, the creators of XRP are David Schwartz, Arthur Brito, and Jed McCaleb. They created it before Ripple existed. This is a fact. Off the top of my head, development started in June 2012. Maybe sooner, and you can fact check me, of course. And so through context, we can see that he must have been saying something to the effect, and this is my recollection also, of, uh, no, it's the people that... Uh, 
created XRP are the same people that created Ripple, therefore it's Ripple's XRP. That's, that's effectively the argument. I remember uh, having to correct him on this. And, um, and so then um, he shared some sort of hit piece, and I don't remember what that article was. He deleted Again, he deleted that post also, so I can't share with you what it was, but it was some sort of ideological hit piece. He thought that was, ma- was making his point, and then it wasn't. Um, and then he asked, and then I was telling him, you know, obviously, again, Ripple was created after XRP was created, and he wanted some proof. So I gave him some proof. And I have, I have multiple proofs here, actually. So I shared this thread. I don't need to read through this. I've shared it on the channel more, on more than one occasion. But there's this uh, thread that's pretty well known, I think, at this point within the, the XRP community of David Schwartz, one of the creators of XRP and the XRP Ledger, back in 2019, talking about when XRP was created. And XRP was created on June 2nd, 2012, which is provable. And at the time, it was actually, um, it was actually known as uh, XNS, and it was renamed XRP. But he provided a link to GitHub, which I believe I have up here. So, yeah, here we go. Uh, June 2nd, 2012, uh, fixed starting number of XNS. And you can see that was posted by Arthur Brito. And we're, if, we're, if you look at the screen, you can see where my cursor is right here. That's the 100 billion XRP that was created on that date. It just happened to have been called an XNS. There, so it was just a rename. But that's the birth of it. And so, so think about this. Now, Ripple, the company, didn't exist. We know that, right? So if I walked up to Billy Bambro and, uh, and on, on June, June 2nd of 2012, and I said, who created XRP? And fine, it was known as XRP, XNS then. But still, if I asked him that, because, you know, understand it got renamed XRP there. If I asked him that, what do you think he'd say? Would he say Ripple created it? If I asked him that on June 2nd, 2012, would he say Ripple created it? No, because Ripple didn't exist. If I asked him that on June 2nd, 2012, the answer is no, he would not say Ripple. He wouldn't be aware of Ripple because it didn't exist, so Ripple clearly didn't create it, correct? This is how logic works, right? If you've got half a brain, you know this. Um, so then I shared with him this, and this is where we get into the document that, um, that, that's, that has to do with the origin of XRP and actually Ripple the company, which is interesting because it just goes back to the origins. And this is not something, I mean, stuff that I touch, I've touched on it a handful of times over the years, but not that frequently. So I thought it'd be fun to make this video because it's a little bit different and going back to kind of like some of the history and stuff. But um, I respond, one of the posts that he wrote here was, again, it's all been deleted because he did not want a record of himself getting destroyed by a guy named Moon Lambo on the internet. He didn't like that, I'm sure. But he was wrong. And I had the facts on my side, obviously. And, um, and so we deleted something, and I just wrote to him, and this is November 24th, 2020. I wrote, it's striking, it's striking me that you're more interested in defending your position than acknowledging truth. What in David's thread about the creation of XRP specifically do you dispute? And so then he responded to me, and he deleted that post also, so I don't know exactly what it was, but he wanted some sort of specific proof. So he was denying something, and I wrote, here is actual proof that XRP was created months before Ripple existed, what part of this do you not believe is true? And this leads us to the documents, which was shared by somebody here. And here you can see Articles of Incorporation of New Coin Inc. So New Coin was created. It was rebranded as Open Coin. And then after that, it was, uh, re- it was renamed uh, Ripple, Ripple Labs, with a DBA as Ripple. It just means doing business as. And so here you have September 19th, 2012, Articles of Incorporation of New Coin Inc., now, I just, I have to ask you, because I'm, I'm not that smart. I'm not an internet guy, and I'm on that boat. Does, does September 19th, 2012, does, does that come before or after June 2nd, 2012? Is it before or after? I'm not, I'm not good at stuff. I'm not really good at stuff. So is, is September 19th, 2012, before or after June 2nd, 2012? Because XRP was created on June 2nd, and then here you have the creation of Ripple, then known as NewCoin, uh, months uh, in the month of September, uh, in, in 19th of September, 2012. Obviously, anybody with half a brain who is intellectually honest will see the point. Oh, yeah. Well, Ripple didn't create that then. It absolutely is the case. There are there are some people, there's a certain amount of overlap. It's not the case that all the people that created XRP were also founders of Ripple. It's not the case that all the founders of Ripple created XRP. You can say it both ways. It's the same damn thing. For instance, David Schwartz is not a founder of Ripple, but he's one of the people that created XRP. It's not fair to state that Ripple created XRP for a ton of reasons. 
And again, the one that just destroys the logic, anybody that says otherwise, because it's even if they want to make the bogus claim, it's the same people just go like, oh, OK. So if it were June 2nd, 2012, just ask the person, if I asked you on June 2nd, 2012, the date that XRP was created, who created XRP? Would you say Ripple? Just ask them that. And if they say yes, they are lying to you. Are there the stupidest person on the entire planet? And if you found that, congratulations. That sounds like a barrel of fun. Have some conversations with that person. I'm sure you can just learn a whole bunch. Um, and so, but separately, there is this. And this is a document from September 17th, 2012. And it's interesting. I don't have an answer for, for this, but they actually do reference OpenCoin. So it is reported everywhere that I've ever seen that the company was founded as NewCoin, then became OpenCoin. In fact, here's the XRP a ledger.org website indicating just as much uh, right here for those of you that are looking at the screen. Uh, now, interestingly, on the 19th, that's when NewCoin was incorporated, but then two days before that, they're referencing OpenCoin Inc. So I can't explain that. Um, I don't, I don't, I, it's, if, if anybody has the answer to that, just let me know. Um, it could have had to do, so I mean, it's possible that that, that stamp with September 19th I mean, if it was a couple days sooner or something like that for filing, for processing reasons, I, I have no idea. I could always speculate on that. But either way, here's an actual document dated September 17th, 2012, and it's signed by Jed McCaleb, Chris Larson, and Arthur Brito. Only two of those people were created XRP. Chris Larson did not. And so check this out. And this is what I think that almost none of you listening right now have ever seen. It's just, it's not something that's been well circulated or well known. Uh, so if you have seen this, kudos to you. Like, you must be in the weeds like me, <laughs> right? Really paid attention to this stuff. But uh, anyway, it reads as following. Chris Larson, Jed McCaleb, and Arthur Brito, the founders, whom developed a distributed open source software platform for uh, making and receiving payments in virtual currency, Ripple, hereby agree as of the date first written above, the effective date, as follows. And let's pause to address something here. They wrote that sentence. Chris Larson, despite that sentence, did not do any development of XRP. Zero, he's not a coder, he did absolutely none of that. So despite the fact that they worded that, that's probably for some sort of legal reason just to have them grouped in together. So it, it represents something from a legal perspective. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't say what, but I can only intuit that that was the intent of this. And then they wrote, uh, they got three points here. Number one, the founders agree that 80% of all Ripple credits, I gotta pause there actually, uh, XRP back then, they were calling XRP Ripple Credits. So when you see Ripple Credits, they're talking about XRP, but I'm going to read it as they wrote it. Uh, the founders agree that 80% of all Ripple Credits shall be allocated to the company as determined by the percentage share of all existing credits set forth in the ledger created, approved and adopted by the majority of founders as the official ledger. Number two, the founders further agree that Arthur Brito shall receive 2% of all the Ripple credits of the official ledger. The founders acknowledge, and listen to this, the founders acknowledge that these credits have no value as of the effective date and that any compensation for work performed by Arthur Brito is provided in a separate consulting agreement with OpenCoin Inc. Yeah, so I'll just pause to note there. Uh, it's what I was kind of referencing a bit earlier in the video. You, you'll have these people that will talk about XRP and, oh, they're just dumping on everybody. And they just, they're so greedy and they kept all this XRP for themselves. But again, it was worth zero dollars and zero cents. And they were very transparent, quite quite transparent publicly about their holdings. Ripple always has been. Uh, their holdings of XRP. And yet, despite that, people around the world decided to speculate on XRP, giving it a tremendous market value, going from literally zero to today tens of billions of dollars. And that's not Ripple's fault. Ripple didn't do anything wrong by giving themselves something worth zero dollars and zero cents, and then people make that worth something, that, that, that make that asset that Ripple holds worth something in the future. That doesn't then mean that Ripple becomes greedy because people decided that it was worth something. When, when, when they had it, it was worth zero, and they didn't know if it was going anywhere. That's not how this works. Anyway, and then uh, the, the document continues. It is anticipated that a total of 100 billion credits shall be recorded on the official ledger. If the official ledger is revised or any other ledger is created within 36 months of the date of this agreement that sets forth a lesser percentage of credits for Brito than the number set forth in the official ledger, Brito shall have the right to acquire additional credits at no cost to him, sufficient to bring his credit grant to 2% of the total number of credits. And so there you go. It's just indicating who's going to be allotted what. That's pretty much it. 
And then number three, the founders further agreed that the Ripple platform will be made available for distribution and licensed under a permissive open source license as soon as operation, operationally optimal. So let's pause right there again. Given that XRP, the XRP ledger itself, is open source, Ripple has no special permissions over it, it makes zero sense to state that XRP is Ripple's XRP unless you're referencing that XRP which Ripple holds, which is not what's happening in the case of Guy from Coin Bureau, and it's not what was happening with Bitcoin maximalist Billy Bambro with Forbes. It's just, it's just wrong, and we need to push back against this stuff because it's just not precise, and it can confuse people that are new to crypto in particular. So I don't like it. And I, I just, and on top of that, the people that are doing it when they've been corrected and they know better, like, like they're intentionally, it's bad, but like, it shows, it shows a lack of character. They're misleading people, folks. They're misleading people into, they know it's wrong, and they're doing it anyway because they want to crap on XRP. They are, they are just, it is what it is. I don't like it. It grinds my gears, son. It really grinds my gears. So I'm always going to push back against this stuff here. Because, like, how about precision of words? Like, does this matter? Do, do, do ideas mean things? Does it matter to anybody out there? Apparently not these people. I just wish they'd stop doing it. But again, it just shows who they are. And, and you still see even today, Billy Bram, Bambro, you will see him to this day, not always, but regularly, he will still write Ripple's XRP. He knows better. He knows better to the degree that I corrected him and he was obviously embarrassed by what he wrote and he didn't want a record of that. And he was so wrong that he deleted it to cover his tracks and then he just went on doing what he wanted to do. That's a lack of character right there. And then uh, the document wraps up by stating, it is agreed that Brito shall consent to open source his comp contribution to the Ripple platform at the same time that all other Ripple founders do the same. In exchange for assigning to the company his IP rights in Ripple, Brito shall have a lifetime fully paid up license to develop apps or new functionalities on the Ripple platform. Now that last part kind of cracked me up when I first read it because it's open source. I don't know how that's necessary anyway. <laughs> You know, like, it's open source. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. No, nobody owns XRP and the XRP ledger, but I think that they were just doing it just to, to, to cover the bases. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. To, to what degree, if there were a just legal dispute, to what degree this would have been held up and go, I, I don't know. But that's why it's kind of interesting to look back on this. Like, this is a time capsule type document, folks. It's just kind of neat to look back and see what the origins of all this, because think of what this has grown into. It, it's grown into, a, a, you know, an ecosystem with, Untold numbers of developers building on top of the XRP ledger, uh, a market cap of XRP in the tens of billions, literally millions of, of us in the XRP community holding XRP, optimistic that it's going to result in uh, life-changing wealth. I mean, to the point where, like, I have an XRP-centric YouTube channel and you're listening to it. This is cool as hell. Like, a real community is around this, and it all goes back to this. So anyway, I just thought it'd be neat to make a, a video that's a little bit different, kind of going back to some of the stuff, and also that way I could bitch up a storm about a guy from Coin Bureau and Billy Bambro from Forbes, which is cathartic for me. So <laughs> there's also that. <laughs> but I'm always going to correct people when they say things that aren't true. And, and they're saying things that aren't true. I've got my platform. I'm going to fix the problem to the best of my ability. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.